Hello, everyone. I'm back. Ian is no longer the warlord of this podcast. I'm the warlord, and we're going to execute you right now. Execute you with gaming knowledge. I can take this back. Anytime I want to, I will take it back. Actually, you better better do better. (laughs) Better do better. Uh, Folks, joining me today, joining me, Will Crosby, because I never introduced myself, is the one and only Ian Gibson, who took over the hosting reins last week. And I will say, we don't often compliment each other, and I'm, I don't want to, but he did a pretty good job. Better than I thought I would. Better than you thought he would. And also joining us is Jason from Save Data. Jason, how are you? do it uh very well uh you know that late night east coast time let's go i'm down i'm down to talk games and stuff <laughs> yeah always always a pleasure man good good Just fun um, fact this is 9 p.m eastern which is later than i went to bed last night wow so... <laughs> this is i was gonna say this is the pleasure podcast uh it's our other name uh but we can't have an only fans anymore because they're getting rid of nudity so that sucks actually uh, no <laughs> I, I i read the release they're not getting rid of nudity they're getting rid of sexually explicit content oh, oh thank god which, there's a difference which makes it slightly more unclear <laughs> oh, i just what are you doing did they not see what happened to tumblr nobody saw what happened i don't to think tumblr. anybody wanted to see what happened to tumblr <laughs> yeah, they all left they went to yeah home. they all left <laughs> um Folks, there's a lot to talk about this week, but before we talk about that, we've got to talk about all the different things we've been playing. And as tradition, uh, as tradition uh, as this point, um, since Jason, it's your first episode, you get to go first. What have you been playing, sir? Uh, So we'll do the promotional one first, which is uh, the save data once a week. We do we have a new Nuzlocke out, actually. I think we just did our second episode. It's coming out Sunday. Uh, Heart Gold randomizer on the save data channel um and playing with that was zach and chris zach, chris brings a lot of chaos as you guys probably are aware at the sub pixel yep, channel that makes yep. sense zach yeah. brings a lot of technical difficulties and all the fun stuff uh no he's <laughs> great i love both of them to death uh but... i like that when he shows up on on sub pixel stuff he expects us to crop his webcam and chroma key for him yes <laughs> he's uh he's <laughs> <laughs> Sounds dumb bad on him, but yeah, we've been doing that on, in the meantime. It's been a good time. We're actually picking up a lot more viewers on this one than the last one, so awesome. nice. that's once a week. Personally, I uh, am a guy who plays a lot of old games, uh, which not so not some of the newer stuff. I play both Fire Emblems released in the mid-90s, which is FE4 and FE5 on my own stream. They're only released in Japan, so... How are you playing them? I have an NES emulator that is uh, translated, and there's a patch oh, okay. for it that the hardworking fans worked on. So people like me, who are weirdos, nice. play this <laughs> game. Uh, but they're good. Uh, they actually age really well, surprisingly. Uh, age. They actually graphically look better in three houses. So intelligence systems, I don't know what the hell you're doing. So <laughs> on that. Look at uh, the Fire Emblem burn cast. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's all that's all. If you, anybody knows me, that's I play a lot of FE, Star Fox 64 and like Pokemon. I play a lot of old stuff. Uh, actually kind of wanted to ask you guys in the middle of this. It's going to be a weird question. I saw your game list, actually. I, I don't know. Uh, your, your top. Oh, yes. Game list. Oh, God. I wanted to ask about it. Uh, mm-hmm. You guys can address this how you want. There is zero, I think, tactics or strategy games in the top chunk there. And I was very surprised. Uh, disappointed. I wanted my I wanted my boys to back me up in some of these tactical games. Where's the XComs? Where's uh, where's the Fire Emblems? Where's like uh, I don't know. We we got a lot of potential Advance Wars. You Come know, on, man. Honestly, I I feel like I let people down by not putting Mario Plus Rabbits towards the very top of this. Good list. game. It's a good game. Very True. good game. Yeah. Uh, um, I will say it's mostly a list that we just added games to week to week. So I don't think anyone ever thought like because you only got one a week. So we were kind of just adding either we were also trying to balance it. So we're either adding really good games or really bad games. And I look at that list (laughs) and I think of like 10 games. I can't believe I didn't like put on there or mention like like I feel like I should. I feel like Super Mario World should be on that list. But it oh, is it's not. It's not. No, because it's no. just random games. Which, by the but, way, 
Chris brings us up I all think the part time. Of it is we, also, we all hate that list. <laughs> Oh, okay. It's but, chaos. But I think part of it is also, you know, it's like, hey, let's talk about Super Mario World. And it's like, everybody's going to agree it's towards the top of the list. Mm. It's not really necessarily an interesting discussion. That's yeah. True. So part of it was also trying to come up with, at least for me, I was trying to come up with spicy titles that would encourage either intense discussion about the game or intense discussion about that game in relation to the list. You know, how yeah. do you compare these very disparate games? And I, and I think um, what we're going to end up doing is Ian's idea, which is having a bunch of us who contributed to the list um, sit down and do a live stream of us picking the perfect top 10, which is that, what is the perfect 10 fun. out of 10, 9 out of 10, 8. So you may have a couple games that you really like, but they might all be 8 out of 10s. So you can only pick one of those to be the 8 out of 10. Oh, um, wow. I actually really like that. That's a clever idea. So, and yeah. we'll have to eke out a 1, 2, and 3 out of 10 for it. So I think that's Each a good way of settling it. Uh, yeah, and then we we kind of settle on the main list okay. after that. So, um, but I think that that kind of brings up a good a good point, which is a good question, which is which tactics game would you add to the list? And um, I think for I think ahead. for me, just as an example, I would put Mario Plus Rabbits because I feel like that is a tactics game that is very underrated, and by putting it on the list would be an opportunity for me to pitch it. What, what, what would you do, Jason? That that game should be pitched. I agree with you 100%. That game, just for how it introduced, I think, the broader audience to it and just mix things yep. you wouldn't expect. Mario with tactics and also just throwing rabbits for the hell of it. Yeah. So that alone kind of makes it an interesting concept. Um, I mean, it's going to sound quick. I probably would pick a Fire Emblem. I just don't know which one. I played yeah. a lot of them. Mm -hmm. everybody has their own opinions on it's like pokemon everybody has their own opinion which pokemon game yeah. is the best no, no, so you're not gonna, yeah you're not gonna you're not gonna please everybody with your pick so that's why i always gonna be picking xcom too it's moddable uh you can experience all kinds of different things uh there's only obviously only two games xcom one and xcom two so i just like how you mm -hmm. can kind of build your own unique experience with it. i think it's one of yeah. the best games steams at least so that's what i would put on for tactics games actually um yeah. What about you, Will? What would you? What tactics game specifically would you put on the list? I would probably put XCOM two. Um, uh, <clears throat> I we've been over this a lot, but the reasons I like XCOM, even though you think uh, Kingdom, what is it, Kingdom? Um, Rabbits. Rabbits. Yeah, is a better tactic game. The thing I like about XCOM is being able to customize the characters and like follow them and like get upset when people die and everything like i don't care when mario dies um probably xcom 2 you're taking out of context right there <laughs> um i i never played xcom 1 i never played any of the the xcoms before for axis either um but i'm trying to think of what other tactic games i played this is supposed to be an easy question will you but probably final tis. fantasy just tactics out, obviously I, mean, I will take the show back. <laughs> Don't um, you touch the show. I, I guess I just, I, I just, I thought it was just a fun point to bring up to you guys. Uh, I can yeah. go in my third and final game, which will actually lead in your games, I think, too, which is a very nice. It's uh, a similar title in terms of MMO. Uh, I picked up playing uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic mm, by Bioware. Ooh. And I don't know what the hell I'm doing until I start <laughs> playing with a friend. But I will say the best part about this game. The combat as an MMO, I, I think they're kind of MMO combats are pretty bad, but 100% agree. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing about this that I really like is all the all of the dialogue is voice acted, like every single one. So I have Snake is one of the characters, like Snake, or what's the guy who voices Snake, isn't it? Shepard's one of the voice actresses, uh, the female voice actress. Um, oh, uh, David Hayter? Yeah, David Hayter is one of the guys. Too. Oh, and Jennifer Hayter. So you just recognize a bunch of these. Yeah, it's just funny to hear him reading like Sith lines off or like bounty hunter lines off. It's like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. But all the lines are voice acted. You can make all kinds of crazy stuff. But I think the big thing for me is obviously the story is really good. I like Star Wars a lot. It's a palate cleanser from whatever the sequel is. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, really. But it's nice to get a different take on yeah. that and still have Star Wars and make my own story. Um, I don't know, as, as an MMO, I've never been a big MMO guy, and I'm glad I have an alternative to World of Warcraft, because Blizzard, everybody's joining the hate train with me a little bit later, but I'm glad uh, <laughs> there's an alternative to it. So, uh, this yeah. is a great game. I'd suggest that everybody, if you like Star Wars at all, or 
Um, you can take it at your own pace and just play for free too. It's that's what also interests me. You can demo yeah. it out for free, then if is you don't it, like it, you don't like it. It's consistently updated still, right? Yeah, they like, always did the last one was 2019, but wow. still, it's still updated pretty frequently. But it was made in 2011, I think, and then yeah. they update it since then. I, I have uh, it somewhere. I think it's in the closet. My guy is an undercover Sith guy. He's doing all the nice things though, so you know he's he's not really a Sith. He's just he's just a wannabe bad guy. So he he, he kind of takes it easy on a lot of people. Instead of like lightning everybody in my options, I usually am like, okay, let's 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 calm it down. So it's a fun <laughs> game. Like I said, I think it'll lead into your guys' MMOs that you guys have been playing too. But it's I would suggest it as well. It's a good game and. It's been taking up a lot of my fucking time. I'll tell you right now. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, that's awesome. <clears throat> I um I played that game a little bit at launch, and I remember it being really fun. Um, but I'm pretty sure it had a price tag back then, and I didn't feel like paying it, so I did not do that. Um, but speaking of MMOs, Ian, you want to give us your little Final Fantasy 14 update? Yeah, I've been playing one game, one game only. It's a little <laughs> game called Final Fantasy XIV, and baby, it's still good. I played a lot of it. Um, I beat A Realm Reborn, which is basically wow. the launch game. I mean, they came back and they patched some stuff, but it's basically the launch content, pre-expansions, and updates. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, I'll say it again. I've said it a lot. A lot of people badmouth the Realm Reborn story, but you know what? It's not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. It had some good story beats. Um, uh, right after I finished it, I actually went and so far I'd just been doing the free trial and I was like, you know what? My inventory is getting full. I need a retainer. I want to do all this other stuff. So I went and bought the game and I'm continuing to play it. I haven't, I don't think I've hit the Heaven's Ward content yet. There's this really weird gap between the end of A Realm Reborn and the start of Heaven's Ward where you're just like doing all these missions and there's still main quest, main story quest missions mm -hmm. and they still feel like big story beats. But for whatever reason, they're just giving you like nothing for experience. <laughs> so, so like for example, like it's a level like a level fifty quest story quest would for example give you like twenty five thousand experience points, right? And that's a big bump. It's a level fifty quest, so they're like, hey, we know you're at level fifty. We'll give you a bunch of XP. The missions I'm doing right now, it's they're not drastically different from the previous missions, but they're giving me like four thousand XP each. It's just like that's so I've been weird. stuck at level. 52 for like three or four days now because i'm just not getting experience even though i'm still doing these missions whereas i'm used to before you're like constantly leveling up because if you do the main story quests they will just give you a bunch of xp but uh long story short that game's still fantastic i still have a lot of content to go i'm crunching through it uh absolutely give it a shot nice i'm excited you're playing it i've been playing it too um i was just will's first mmo it's not true um i was <laughs> I, I nothing was bringing me back to it uh, after I stopped playing it. And then we did that stream, me, you and David. Uh, and after that stream, I was like, yeah, I guess I could keep playing this. Uh, and so I put another like 20 hours into it or whatever. Uh, so I'm still playing it. I've strictly since starting it over. I have not done any crafting stuff, uh, even though it's really good. Uh, I've just been doing MSQ yeah. stuff. Uh, to try and get up there. I've been running through dungeons. Uh, it's fun. Uh, I don't find the dungeons fun at all. Um, but I, I do think it kind of stinks that it's kind of a catch-22 where they have a fantastic way of, if you're a solo player, they have the whole duty finder, and it does a fantastic job of just being like, here's a party of other people to run through the dungeon. And if you're higher level and you're trying to get XP, you join the duty finder and it throws you in a random dungeon. Yeah. typically with somebody who's lower level. So it's very easy to run dungeons when you're playing solo like we are. But the problem is when you're running those dungeons, the rest of the party, if not literally the entirety of the rest of the party, has already run this a dozen times. So they're literally just like speed running it and you're just kind of hanging onto their coattails. So you don't really get to fully experience the dungeon. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of a catch-22. I don't know how you would solve that, but I, I, I assume you're kind of hitting the same thing where you're not really experiencing the dungeon. You're just kind of speed running it with, with experienced people. Yeah, and it's just like, I don't know, I just don't find it fun, like, just attacking yeah. everything and everyone else doing all the other things. I don't know, it's just like... Are, are, no, so, I, yeah. are you playing with... So you, when you are with these people, you're not playing like in a call with them. I think that also brings out a lot yeah. of the fun They're just randos. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Yeah, 
Which is like, but I will yeah. say, I think, I think part of the problem is, it, I don't think this is an issue with Final Fantasy XIV, but all those dungeons are pretty simple because they assume that you haven't really touched dungeons before. Um, but literally, as soon as you hit level 50 and a little bit before level 50 as well, like all these quests pop and you go talk to them and they're like, hey, that place you cleared, it's full of enemies again. We need you to go do it. And then it unlocks like a hard version of the dungeon. And then I started to run some of those and it drastically changes it. Like it's it's the same environment, but they completely change where you're going in the environment, the enemy placements, the boss fights. And I will say that those dungeons are much more exciting and dynamic. It feels like they did simple dungeons up front and they saved all their good enemy encounters, good environment design, good boss fights, et cetera, for those hard versions. So I, I would at least look forward to that. Yeah. You find that tricky as a, a solo player, though, if you go like if you're going into those harder ones to like find the right setup to make sure they're good. Yeah, it's on... it, it's definitely a little bit trickier because it's more challenging. But um, the good thing is that if you join a party and the party starts to have trouble and it's pretty noticeable to the party, everybody 100 percent of the time just starts communicating. They're like, hey, tank, maybe you should do this. Or they'll speak up and be like, hey, what's the strategy on this boss? I've never seen this before. And they offer it right away. So so even though it can be a little challenging, it's not like people are like, hey, get your shit together. This sucks. And they're dropping out. People are literally just like, no, I'm, I'm here to help you. This is what you should do. This is what the boss tell is. Let's give it another shot. So yeah. it's it can be difficult. It's more challenging. But the community is is great at, at getting you up to speed. Yeah. They were, I, there was one dungeon I was in where one of the guys was trying to politely tell the tank that he shouldn't run into the room, grab all the enemy, grab an enemy and run back. He's like, no, go into the middle of the room, grab everyone and stand in the middle of the room. Like, you don't yeah. have to bring them all back to us, but also make sure you have every enemy so we can like yeah. fight them all. And it was funny him like I could clearly like read in the chat like he was trying to say it as nice as possible without like being mean. I was like, good for you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Final Fantasy 14 has been fun. Um, I beat Bioshock 2 and Minerva's Den. Uh, I talked about Bioshock 1 uh, a while back when I beat that, and um, that is a very tight, very good game. Um, it, you just, it's a great experience. Bioshock 2 is not that. It is <laughs> very <laughs> empty, and they try to make you a big daddy without really committing to making you a big daddy. They like made you a half step between big daddy and the character from the first game. And it comes across a little weird. They didn't do enough to make plasmids feel cooler as a, as a big daddy, the little sister stuff got old pretty quick. Um, and I just, I ended up not even gathering with them. I would just go dump them off uh, and save them. And overall, I think the story wasn't, wasn't as like, clear concise uh, and it was kind of like you could guess it about halfway through i mean i had played it before but mm -hmm. still like coming back to it, it's just like yeah i get what's going on here i really don't care um on the other hand the dlc minerva's den is incredible and if you ever want to play anything after bioshock one just go play that because it's great it's it's a tight like three to five hour experience um new weapons new plasmids all sorts of cool stuff um great story very well written and very concise um highly recommend it so uh go check that out um then i moved on to bioshock infinite again i'm playing oh, through all man. the remasters now oh man um i played these when they first came out man bioshock infinite i'm not far enough i, I remember it from before Strictly speaking, on a design level, uh, that city is so much more real than Bioshock Rapture. Oh, wow. Um, only because Bioshock Rapture you arrive to after it has gone dark. And in Bioshock Infinite, you are the reason it's really sparked. And that whole yeah. intro sequence, you can your and multiple sequences throughout the game when you're safe again, you can just walk around environments with people in them. You can buy things yeah. from shops. You can like vaguely talk to people. You can, all that sort of stuff, and it's very very well done. And it's probably more applicable today. But that 
perfect racist utopia is so well realized it's scary um like yeah it's a great environment yeah, yeah. it is it is absolutely incredible uh, and the detail on some stuff is, is insane it's it's very well laid out and everything um uh, yeah and also it, it just it when they did the remastered they didn't do a lot of work so because infinite was newer anyways it just it still looks really good um mm -hmm. compared to one and two remastered they're just like they look like how i remember them on the 360 one, one is rough still yeah. a little bit nowadays yeah um but yeah I'm, I'm really enjoying infinite uh the weapon i i like being able to carry two weapons at a time the upgrade system is really good uh because you can just pay for everything at once you don't have to wait for those power to the people stations you can just if you have money you can buy upgrades uh i like how different the uh tonics are, are are their vigors in this game instead of plasmids yeah. i like how different they are they're very either like you shoot a thing or you can lay a trap with it uh they have all the gear selections and everything so i, I i'm really enjoying it uh the other problem is on the 4k tv it makes all the elements extremely tiny um oh and uh not a, not, not that i can't read them but they're like way tiny uh, and that's kind of annoying, but again, I'm having a blast with it. Uh, Bioshock One, I like, couldn't put down, even though I'd played it before. Two took me a while, and this one, I've just been like cooking through it because it's very it, it, the design of it's very engaging. Um, and I've forgotten things that have happened in that game, so I'm actually kind of looking forward to the ending again, even though that one's that one's a mind trip. Yeah. It's a little egotistical on Ken Levine's part, as I remember, but yeah, those. I think I did a high school review of it. Um, and then uh, when Karen got home today, we started playing Twelve Minutes, uh, and we're about forty-eight minutes into it, uh, and uh, that's been pretty fun. Uh, just trying to figure things out, and Karen just being like, "Oh, what if we stabbed her?" I'm just like, "Yeah, it's a great <laughs> idea," and then. <laughs> In the next loop, she's like, what if we stabbed her again? Yeah. And she's like, the second time, she's like, oh, uh, it just skips it. It just lets us do it now. And I'm like, Karen, you need to put the controller down. I also told her if I was in a time loop, she has to believe me the first time I say it. I, I was I was watching it briefly. I was like, the wife is like, oh, we're not in a time loop. I'm like, uh, dude, if I tell you that, please trust me. Yeah. Like, it's actually funny because that um, I'm not going to go too far a because I'm not yes. too far in the game, but B there's not much to spoil. But um, when you can you choose in a dialogue option to explain that you're in a time loop tour and you can explain it every single time if you want to. Um, but you have you can click on any object to explain it to her so she's like what, what, what how are you going to explain this and you're like you're like what about the bed hubba 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 and she goes what about the bed and you go yeah i guess i guess you're right and so you like you can't just <laughs> it's not only the interactable objects that would apply that you can choose so you have to go around and, until you like you really have to think about how would i prove to someone that uh that you're in a time loop and and there's a couple of those that i'm like oh that and i click on it and then she like uh dismisses it and you're like oh yeah that's true um so it's, it's really fun i'm enjoying it um there's a lot of like characters clipping through walls and stuff because they'll do like a whole animation but it won't they'll either mm -hmm. jump to a spot or they won't move so like the guy like beat me up in the closet and i was just like halfway out of the map and everything uh it was really weird um yeah that's it i think that's all i've been playing i want to say something else but i don't remember so it doesn't count uh which means it's time to talk about the news and that means we get to play the one and only news theme now zach couldn't make it to do it live this week so we got to play the recording um so i apologize everyone who's excited for him to be here but here we go <laughs> We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What's up, news? Oh, there's some great news this week that I'm excited about, and I kind of just want to dive into it because you can't stop me. Skyrim. It's a game 
that is treasured among humans. If we were to send a satellite like Voyager 2 out again, I think we would just put Skyrim there with an Xbox 360 and a towel in case the red ring. And we would just ship it out and be like, here you go, aliens. See that Earth over there? You can climb it. Skyrim is stupid. Um, and also they're re-releasing it again. So be excited for that. I can't believe I thought this was a joke when I saw a tweet that they are releasing the anniversary edition because uh, it's been 10 years and you can upgrade from the special edition to the anniversary <laughs> edition. And they, di do they have a list of differences? That'd be also a good on-screen joke to read. Right they there. added fishing. Okay. There we go. Skyrim. It's just All a right. picture. Next gen upgrade. There we go. And next gen upgrade fishing and plus 500 plus creation club elements, which are mods. Uh, which Perfect. you could probably get anyways. But um, listen, if they're updating the graphics, making a 4K and everything, I've been meaning to play Skyrim again. I guess I'll do that. But um, what really, <clears throat> the really good Skyrim news this week that I genuinely enjoyed was uh, a few Skyrim devs were talking about um, stories from the development this week. Um, one of them was the cart in the beginning. They, uh, It's an actual physics cart that you were being... Tra uh, trailed in at the beginning of that game and so when they were doing testing you have to move rocks out of the way so it doesn't in Skyrim physics glitch out or everything and what they couldn't figure out is every so often the uh, cart would fly up into the air miles in the air and so what they finally figured out is bees because they were collectible by the character were immovable objects according to like the meshes so anytime the cart came across a bee it registered as could not move forward anymore so it just went up as fast as possible mm -hmm. um and that led to another story of uh the skyrim treasure fox story which did either of you know about this no, uh, I before, saw how um, long it was, and that guy had more experience in that like series of tweets than I've had with the entire Skyrim game. <laughs> but I learned. I I learned. I, I couldn't believe. So I had never heard this rumor. So uh, for folks who don't know, there was always a rumor that if you followed a fox in Skyrim, it would lead you to treasure. So it's a super interesting uh, Twitter thread. So I highly recommend going to check it out. But basically, what it comes down to is that it was never programmed that way. Uh, what ended up happening is the fox was programmed to get as far away in net meshes as possible, like processing meshes. So in the wilderness, those meshes are huge and far apart, but near treasure and encampments and dungeons, they're much more close together because there's people there that you have to interact with and everything. So they would run towards those to run more than a hundred away from the character and so the mm -hmm. fox ran towards a place where it could easily get up to a hundred as fast as possible in mesh distance um even though it wasn't that far from the player in actual distance so you could legitimately follow a foxes to treasure uh in that game and i i think the guy explains it way better than i do i just want to make it quick but i love when that sort of stuff works out because that tip makes sense and why it makes sense confused the developers because they never put it in there. And that to me is incredibly interesting because people are like, oh, this tip works. And that developer would be like, no, we didn't program that. But then they try it and it works. They're like, oh, no. Um, that along with the Morrowind thing where it would turn the Xbox off and on during a loading screen is one of my favorite favorite. Uh, Elder oh, that's Scrolls your favorite things. one when your Xbox just gets turned off when you're playing? No, uh, <laughs> so for Morrowind, they, during a loading screen, it reboots your Xbox to reboot oh. the RAM because the Xbox didn't have enough RAM all the time, and you you never knew because it was just sitting on a loading screen. Yeah, um, it was just like a two-minute loading screen. Yeah, and Jesus. they did that to, like, to f make the game bigger, which I think is incredible. Um, Ian, you want to round out this uh, here Bethesda stuff with the uh, Quake stuff? Yeah, let's talk about Fortnite and their new Among I Us mode. So, much. Um, so basically, Fortnite came out with an imposter's mode. I believe they had teased it previously, but it officially was uh, announced and released. 
and surprise, surprise, it heavily borrows from Among Us, not just how the game is set up, where you have certain tasks to do and you have emergency meetings, but also the map. Uh, there were some tweets going around where people were basically comparing the game design of the Among Us, uh, I'm sorry, the Fallout, Fortnite, Fortnite Imposters map with one of the most popular maps in Among Us, and they're basically the same flow and same area designs. Uh, long story short, Fortnite completely ripped off Among Us for their latest mode, and um, th this one kind of had an interesting um, clap back on Twitter where a lot of the Among Us devs were just very openly depressed about it. They said we would have been completely open to any sort of collaboration with Epic, but they never talked to us. They just ripped off our game, period. I, I don't know. What, did you guys happen to see this? What's your take on it? Well, do you have a take? Because I've got one. I can, I can wait if you've got one. No, you go. You first. go. It sucks. That's my take. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When I first initially read this, so I, 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 I'm a fan of the game. Like the, the developers for Among Us have earned everything that they've done, and their their game is great and all of that jazz. But having said that, having said, I agree that I, I would have liked to seen a collaboration and them talking with them if they're going to do this because I feel like those guys are very open and they've I, I obviously said right there that they're very open. But Fortnite. I'm not the residential expert on Fortnite in my group. I, I've only played it once. Zach is, that's his favorite game I've heard on the grand. We beat it. Will and yeah. I beat it on stream. There you so. go. You guys are more experienced <laughs> than I am. Uh, like, look, I'm not going to say it's not shady or like it is. It definitely is like one of those, like we took it. But the thing is, imposter games are not unique to Among Us. So that'd be like saying, I'll use the example of Town of Salem, right? Um, that's a very popular game, famous game. Did Among Us take from that and ask the developers about that? No, I know it's completely different because this is a direct, you know, like, oh, like right when this is in yeah. its height of its popularity, it has very similar themes to it very clearly is inspired or like just directly stole. But like my point is that like if you borrow from games, which other games do, I, I it might be shady and, you know, like it might be kind of like, hey, we probably should have done something to kind of maybe involve these guys a little bit, but I wouldn't want it to become a, a, a way where developers were scared of including something that might be similar to a different game. I would never want it to become that. So yes, I would have loved yeah. to talk with these Among Us guys. They're great They're great developers. They're very responsive. You saw it in the tweets themselves that they're very accepting to just working with other you know, uh, game companies. But this is one of those cases where I, I can't blame Epic, even if I don't like Fortnite. I'm not a huge fan of it at all, or Epic Games. Yeah. But I can see why they would do it, because it's super popular. It's just the right move. It's just like, it's one of those like, should you have done it? Maybe. But like, I can see why. And they're just trying to game for something that's very popular. It's like when people were trying to do their own Battle Royale games, adding a Battle Royale mode or zombie mode. Everybody had zombies back in like, what? call of duty zombie mode uh red <laughs> red dead red dead redemption had a zombie mode it's stuff yeah. like that it's like ah like i yeah. i get it it's just I, I i think the problem like i agree i think iteration is fine and even copying other people's fine i think it's to the degree of copying they went like i <clears throat> like town of salem or like werewolf or secret hitler all that stuff is different enough from uh among us that it's not like some crazy copying thing like people make video games about one person lying i mean we played dread hunger a couple weeks ago and yeah that's that is an imposter game with a completely different mechanic but just taking the core thing and making it almost exactly the same including one of the maps being almost exactly the same is a little bit rough um i i think i mean epic's gonna do what epic does because i mean they did the same thing with fortnite they turned yeah. a minecraft clone into a PUBG clone um and then didn't do anything with the minecraft side of it anymore um what i do think is i think it this applies to anything it never hurts to ask they could have epic could have easily or fortnite developers sent a letter to the among us people saying hey we want to put a uh, imposter mode in do you want to help us hey we're going to put an imposter mode in we don't need help we're just telling you anything on that line i mean the among us people could have said no way you can't do this sure we'll help they could have said anything it doesn't matter epic's going to do it anyways they're allowed to do it anyways but just communicating i think would have been fine it always makes me think of uh like weird al asked every single artist before he 
made a yeah. song not because he had to because he he felt it was right a- and i think that applies like just ask yeah i think i think for this i think given Fortnite's history and um i think this is just super scummy i, I think i think one of the great things about the video game industry is that it's not super copyright heavy you know like we've talked about there are there are occasional instances of game mechanics being patented but overall the games industry is pretty open and collaborative and appreciates iteration um as long as you're not using the exact same ip etc but i think iteration is the key phrase there and this is not an iteration at all this is just a straight rip of among us um you know cuz even among us is an iteration on you know the mafia werewolf format there are other iterations of that, like Coup. There are uh, Secret Hitler, which is big in the board game world, is an iteration on that. All of those were introducing new mechanics, changing core mechanics, etc. And Fortnite is not doing that. And I think that this, like you said, Will, this is just so like a complete lack of like distrust and disrespect for the gaming community by doing this. And like, I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but this is the type of behavior that could very easily lead to the industry clamping down and starting to patent game mechanics. Because I guarantee you that Fortnite is going to make so much more money off of this single mode and their monetization of it than Among Us probably will for the entirety of their game. And they've made a lot of money. And if, if I was Among Us, I would at least entertain the idea of, hey, maybe there's a lawsuit here. And if I wasn't Among Us, if I was a different indie dev and I had something go pretty viral, I would go, hey, maybe we need to patent this because we don't need Epic Games coming along like they did with Fortnite and stealing our core mechanics, our core ideas, and just iterating, I don't, not iterating, but releasing it more quickly than we can and just stealing money from us. So yeah. this, this is a very dangerous precedent that Fortnite has now done at least twice. And it's it's scummy. I hate Fortnite for a lot of reasons, and I'm very very happy that they gave me another completely legitimate reason to hate them. Can I can I play devil's advocate? If it was just curious, now I'm again I've I've already stated my stance, and I I know I'm 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 more like kind of like a just kind of state the like lo- the logic behind it rather than yeah. the actual mm-hmm. integrity. Which you guys, I'm glad you took that approach instead. If this was not Among Us, it was a smaller indie game or whatnot that wasn't you know that much in the gaming like realm or atmosphere of like popularity okay so fortnite took something from i don't know dread even dread we could use dread hunger for an example yeah but it gave it more eyes to dread hunger people are like okay like i like this mode now granted that might not happen but like oh like where'd you get this from fortnite they say inspired by dread hunger or something like that in the fortnite title and it brought yeah. eyes to dread hunger is that now how does that i think how does that work? Just, just curious. I'm, I'm I, I think that's better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause to Will's point, I think, I think the key thing is if the games industry acts like a community and you can bring out a game that is very similar to somebody else's game and it's okay. As long as you say, Hey, we loved that game they made. We wanted to do something similar and we even reached out to them and got permission and or approval, or we at least wanted to put them in the credits. That's okay. This is like, this is a cash grab. This is a flat out naked cash grab, yeah. just literally stealing yeah. ideas for a cash grab. And I think that's the big that's the big problem I have with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's it, great. It, yeah. Exactly. It'd be different if they were like, hey, here's Fortnite, Fortnite uh hidden role brought to you by Among Us, like some funny collaboration title or something. That'd be completely different. But yeah, okay. I, I think it's down to that. Like they didn't even do the bare minimum. You'd be like, hey. Yeah. Um, yeah. So moving on. Um anyone want to talk about this Roblox chat thing? <laughs> I was trying to make heads or tails of it. Not not really. I mean, I will just say that I, I was trying to look into Gilded, which is it looks like they're kind of like a Discord knockoff in a way. Yeah. Um, and I will say that. As somebody who has extensive experience with Roblox, and that is not a joke. I've probably played like 12, 12 plus hours of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Roblox chat is not good, and Roblox's group and community yeah. setup that they have through their websites is not very good either. But it is, it's a huge game. 
and it has a lot of people playing it. And so if they could improve that community, that would greatly improve the game. Um, being able to have like persistent forums or chat servers or even just better group setups, that, that would really improve the game. So I'm not particularly excited by this, but this completely makes sense to me. It feels like they looked at their platform and they said, where is our big gap? Where is something that is really holding us back? And they said chat and community setup and forums, et cetera. And they went out and bought Gilded to kind of jumpstart that. And that completely makes sense. Yeah, I assume this will be rather than a separate app that a kid has to download, it'll be integrated directly into sort of Roblox yeah. stuff <clears throat> to make it um make it easy to do that sort of stuff. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they just redid all their group stuff and everything inside a new a new system like yeah. that. I, I'm definitely reading this as they it's not that they are buying gilded and you are now going to have gilded under the Roblox banner. It is we are going to strip you of all the tech, all the logic, all oh, the yeah. programming you have built, expertise, etc., and incorporate that into Roblox. Gilded's a pretty good name, too. That's good. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, we'll um, uh, speaking of good names, Square Enix is a bad name. Um, okay. There was an article that go. came out from IGN saying that the, uh, the Outriders dev doesn't know how many copies it sold and hasn't earned any royalties. Uh, this sort of sparked a discussion on how, like, the past five or six tent poles of Square Enix, uh, as far as, like, uh, Western games, have not made their money back uh even someone was linking to how hitman wasn't making its money and then they sold it off and then hitman 3 made all of its money back in the first week it sold um anyone have any thoughts on this i think this is just you know this is a combination of square enix the publisher and people can fly the developers just you all signed a bad contract so yeah. basically if i'm reading this article properly the way <laughs> The way it works is that Square Enix would pay royalties for People Can Fly based on the game's first quarter sales. Um, quote, according to the publisher, or no, sorry, sorry. It's, it would receive any royalties for the game's first quarter on sale by August 16, 2021, but there is some sort of threshold they have to hit before royalties are paid out. So People Can Fly, the developer basically says that, quote, according to the publisher, I'm sorry. People Can Fly suggests that, quote, according to the publisher, the revenues from the sale of the game are lower than the total cost of its production, including quality assurance, distribution, and promotion. So there's a lot of assumptions going on here. Yeah. And the other thing is People Can Fly doesn't even know how many copies are sold. And it's just like, how? How can you possibly publish, publish a, how can you sign a AAA game publishing contract and not have stipulations in there where it's like, we get X amount of dollars regardless of sales, et cetera. We get sales data, access to sales data, publishing data, all this marketing data, et cetera. How could you possibly sign that and not have any of that clarified? This just seems like a terrible contract and they're getting kind of burned for it. And I just, I don't feel bad for them at all because of that. It's, it's this, yeah. this is just, this is like but Hollywood accounting, you know? People were also pointing out that <laughs> this is the same thing that has happened with the Avengers developer and tomb raider and hitman yep. so it's like is nobody who wants to partner with square enix learning their lessons and also is square enix not learning their lesson that maybe these games that they're pumping money into aren't returning money yeah uh i have a weird so this game I didn't even know it existed until you gave me this article. I forgot it existed because it wasn't made. I, it wasn't that's, made. That's before, perfectly right. It that's wasn't it. made before 2010, so I have like zero chance. You guys might have a, a, like a medium chance. Uh, my my take. I actually have an interesting question. Again, I like asking and getting your guys' feedback on this too, and I think this is going to be a good conversation, even if it's only for a little bit. Uh, it might not devolve from this topic we're talking about here, but. This game looks like okay. It looks like an average, just like kind of like little mini looter shooter, kind of like a Destiny ish, but like with D and D mechanics or whatever kind of stuff. I don't know. It looked fairly interesting. Whatever. It's a solid Simplistic. seven. Yeah, yeah, exactly is what they said in the article. I think, uh, <laughs> ironically, but um, I I I, I want to get your guys' feedback on it. Is so this is a topic that I think is also interesting. Is 
games that are on game pass is that bad or good for like especially indie games but like when a game gets sold under game pass it might lose the sales because people are like okay i played through it on game pass i don't need to play it anymore i'll sell it back i'm not actually gonna buy it now because i got it for free on game pass is that healthy in the long term for games to be on game pass uh for these future companies especially indie games that like you know obviously need them triple a titles might find different ways but Mm -hmm. i i don't want to say this is the reason this game failed because it was on game pass you could play it out demo it out for seven hours ah this is a seven out of ten game it's not for me or me 2010 ah it's over that age bracket obviously so uh (laughs) is game pass healthy for the state of game like because this game probably didn't get screwed by it because it's on PlayStation or Xbox and sales were still poor. But I'm just saying it's an interesting conversation starter, I think. Sorry. Yeah, I think I think for me, like like common sense, my 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 gut jerk uh, knee reaction is like, yeah, it's bad that you're offering the game for basically free. That's going to cut into your sales. However, there are like countless developers over and over again who have come out on Twitter and basically said, no, we made a lot of money, even though we were on Game Pass. Like Outer, uh, uh, the Outer Worlds was one of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there were a couple other games where they literally came out and they're like, "Look, we hit huge sales targets, even even on Xbox, where you could easily get it for for Game Pass." So I think, as as harsh as it is, I think it literally just comes down to this game was a mediocre seven it was just not powerful enough to drive sales outside of game pass because i think that's the thing is you need to be compelling you need to be compelling enough to drive sales outside of game pass to get people who don't have game pass to want to purchase the game to get ps4 pc owners to want to purchase the game to get people to continue to play the game and buy expansions and get monetization etc and if yeah i feel like there's some some invisible threshold there where if you're just not exciting not as exciting enough as a game pass game then you're just not going to drive sales outside of it. I, I also think Game Pass jump starts word of mouth <clears throat> because yep. so many people can try it for free and then tell their friends who don't have Game Pass or have a PC or PS4 or anything that this game is good, it is worth money if they were to buy it, or this game is bad, it is not worth money. Plus, if that game ever comes off of Game Pass and they want to play it again, they can be like, oh, I played this game for 15 hours. I know it's good. I'm going to buy it. Um, yeah. There's so many that, games. That's... Sorry, just to finish. There's so many games, including Outriders, mm-hmm. that I would never pay money for up front. Um, and then excluding Outriders, there's a lot of those games that I fell in love with and then would have <laughs> paid money for or or might pay money for if it if it ever leaves Game Pass. Yeah. And And you brought up a good point, which is people, when the game leaves Game Pass, it is still available for sale elsewise. And, mm-hmm. and something I, I remember reading about an indie dev, they're talking about how the sales cycle or the sales tail of a game is so much longer now. You know, if you think about like a movie, it makes like 99% of its, of its box office revenue or, or revenue period in that first like week or two. With games, it's not like that anymore. So if you come out on Game Pass, you may not, even if you don't sell really well while you're on Game Pass, once you're off Game Pass a month or two later, if your game has generated enough word of mouth, then people are still going to want to buy it. They're going to put it on their Steam wish list and buy it a year later. You know, they're going to they're going to buy it when it drops on sale. It's going to have enough good word of mouth that people are going to continue to buy it for months and years, even after it's no longer available on Game Pass. And I think that's important. I think Game Pass is just an easy way for for you to get an opportunity to put the game into gamers' hands. It's like an easy way for people to play your game and determine if they want to continue to spend money on it or not. And uh, if your game doesn't hack it, then it's it's not going to sell well, period. You Blockbuster know? in 2021. Most people don't know what Blockbuster was, but that's <laughs> such a, kind of what it was. I used to rent games from there and I'm like, oh, I'm exactly. going to buy this game now. So. God, I 100%. love Blockbuster. Um, before I forget, uh, I was asked to do this as an update um, by my lovely girlfriend. Um netflix we talked about this a few weeks ago that netflix was going to get into game development uh and one of the repercussions of that currently is that netflix is pulling its licenses uh from uh other video games uh i believe the stranger things three game is not going to be for sale anymore and the stranger things content in dead by daylight is being pulled for sale 
but what remaining active, uh, which is a whole different thing wow, because I, I kind of think that's stupid that people can no longer earn a thing that other people might yeah, I have. Like that at all. I mean, um, I hear you, but MMOs, MMOs, and like Destiny, they do that all the time, where it's like limited time period. To right, get but this X is item, like, you know, but this is multi, like, multiplayer matters sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like, you can never use that thing against someone. Versus like an MMO and stuff, it's not usually in PvP. Especially if the thing is bound, not if it's PvP, like you said. Like if the thing's it's unbalanced, the well. Stranger yeah. Things, yeah, the monster I, or the character. I assume they will release a non-themed version of the monster for sale uh and then people can just buy that it'll be the demi goron from zelda um and so i just thought it was interesting karen brought it up uh and i think that's that's pretty cool um moving on this was a quick development today um there was a rumor coming out that a quake revitalized edition was going to come out because it appeared uh on an esrb rating website and then at 11.31 a.m. today, Night Dive Studios tweeted that it is working on bringing new life to Quake today. And then at 1.45, it was announced that Quake Enhanced is available now on PC, yeah. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch. And it's well, on I Game think, Pass. I think there was a one step you missed between all of those, which is that at some point it went live on the Microsoft Store before they announced it. Oh, that. really? Oh, nice. <laughs> it's yeah. even better. Um, I, I just think that's great i've always wanted to play quake uh as many people know i'm a huge yeah. doom 2 fan uh so uh i i kind of like the history like the big hitters in history so now that there's a good way to play quake um i will definitely check that out um, um if i can take the next story go for it girl when i added this is a uh, press release from remedy talking about their control franchise um so there were a couple couple things here there's actually i believe three different new control games in the works there is the multiplayer spinoff with 505 games there is the game that is uh at work with epic i believe um it's a triple a game project with epic has moved into full production and a second smaller scale game remains in full production mode and then there's Vanguard, our free-to-play co-op game project. is still progressing at a good pace. So there's literally three new control games in the works. Um, I, I kind of lost track of that. I thought it was just two, the new AAA and the co-op, but it's actually three. And I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think it's a great universe, and I can't wait to see how they expand it. How, how are you guys feeling? I like Control. Uh, give me more of it. Uh, I, I've only seen Control played from Zach. Or, uh, he played, a, I think, on his channel. Um, a little bit or just off the channel. I think it's, to me, the biggest surprise when you mentioned that, Ian, was that they're doing three games at once. I, I don't yeah. know if how I feel. I, I throw them rather than make sure that the, the like either the multiplayer, the small multiplayer, and then the main major AAA title are really good. It kind of actually, I don't say it's they're going to do bad, but like I think mm -hmm. something's going to get delayed, obviously. Or obviously, they're going to. Yeah, sure I that, can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So I just that's the only thing I was like, okay, three games. Wow, okay, guys, like make sure you got everything in in order. Uh, I want yeah. control to succeed. It's a good it is a good universe. So yeah, it's it's definitely a, a crazy good universe. Um e, these other two I don't think really matter. If you want to hit this um, arc thing. Uh, yeah, I'll just say Intel, they they revealed some new information about their arc GPUs. They gave them a name. So basically Intel is getting into the GPU game. Um, they've been doing graphics for a while as like integrated onboard graphics, as in you buy a graphics, you buy a motherboard, you can plug your monitor into it, but you're not really going to get good graphics or kind of budget laptops, typically without a dedicated graphics card. Um, but it looks like they are slowly heading towards dedicated solo GPU offering. Just kind of wanted to bring this up because NVIDIA has dominated the market for a while. AMD is in the middle of a comeback and they're doing a pretty good job at it um and I, i'm all for intel coming back as well i i want to see more gpus out there i think nvidia was a little bit axed for a while and you know the market's so wonky right now with availability anyways that yeah sure bring in a third competitor let's see what happens nice uh and then the only other thing xbox um uh revealed their new stereo plug-in headset uh yeah yeah <laughs> Maybe thinking deja vu, it's because they revealed the wireless one a while back. Um, I mean, this thing's only, I think it's only 50 bucks. Genuinely isn't that bad for a, 
for a headset. Oh, no, it's 60 no. bucks. No, it's crap then. Don't even touch it. The $10 um, difference, man. <laughs> yeah. So it's always that ten dollars. It's always um, ten dollars, folks. That's gonna be it for this week. I'm gonna play the music, and then we're gonna get the heck out of here, folks. This was local chat episode thirty-three, gentlemen. This was fun, Jason. Excellent job. You were probably the most the well-informed person who has been on this podcast so far. Major difference from me on Around the Monitor, let me tell I you. I know, you're crap on Around the Monitor. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I lose every time. You crap on the monitor? Yeah, he what? just craps right on it. Um, no, and you had genuinely good questions. Um, so thank you for that. That was that was really fun. Uh, yeah, Will told me you're like, like an absolute idiot, but it didn't feel like that <laughs> happens. That's I feel like... That when, I ta- when I tactics games, I lose every time. So that's, that's why I, have to, I See, stop it. We've got the all stars. Jason's great. Elise is great. David's great. We don't need Chris or Zach anymore. We just get to rotate Kyle. those three. Yeah, and then get Kyle in there and Jake a little bit, and then we're golden. Um, folks, you can find all of our content subpixelfilms.com. That'll bring straight to our YouTube channel. Um, you can find Ian on Twitter at ThinkGibson. You can find me on Twitter at Hunty7. You can find Jason on Twitter at the green eight ball the green yeah. eight ball yeah sorry it's pretty good it's pretty good right um it's, it's nice. green night. yes 100%. <laughs> hey that's out on uh rental places today. i'm gonna watch that um i think that's it we've got uh there might be a stream on sunday afternoon this week probably some more final fantasy 14 ian you can help me with the howling winds or something there's some i'm uh, almost done oh, with uh realm reborn so anyways folks have a wonderful night and we we will see you all next week.